Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Good morning. <laughs> New member. <laughs> How is everybody? That's what happens when you do the talk. There you go. There you go. There you go. Welcome to our Sunday school lesson this morning. Um, we're, we're studying this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 through 11, testing our faith. And I wonder, have you noticed that most of our lessons this quarter has to do with faith? Oh, yes. Yeah, every, every lesson. So uh, God is trying to tell us something. Amen. Amen. Yes. This is how we're going to uh, conduct our, our lesson today. We're going to have open prayer. Uh, our scripture, as I said, comes from 2 Corinthians 13, 5 through 11. Uh, then we, the, our subject is test our faith. Then we're going to study the word, and hopefully you'll be able to talk about applications of the word, and we'll have a conclusion and close by Pastor Davis, hopefully. Amen? Okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that this lesson will find a seat in our hearts, in our minds. I pray that you will speak to everyone under the sound of my voice and encourage us, God, to take this lesson at heart. For this is a lesson that every church that belongs to you should study. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the fruit of this lesson will transform us, hallelujah, and we will be less concerned with our credentials and more concerned with our faith in God. I pray that the gospel will prevail in truth. And I pray that as a result of this lesson, we will be restored, hallelujah. We will be equipped, hallelujah, ready for service. In Jesus' name I pray. Let us all say amen, amen, amen and amen. The scripture this morning, I'll read that just to kind of save some time this morning, verses 5 through 11. Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. So now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong. And our prayer is that you may be fully restored. This is why I write these things when I am absent, that when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority, the authority the Lord gave me for building you up, and not for tearing you down. And finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Our lesson context, Paul was among a group of early church leaders known as the apostles. 
Jesus chose the apostles and gave authority to carry out certain tasks, specifically to make disciples of all nations. Paul was not of the original 12. However, he saw the risen Christ and was commissioned by him. Now, there were serious problems in the church of Corinth at that time, caused, caused by their belief that Paul was a false prophet and a con artist. They viewed Paul through the lens of a weak apostle. If he was an apostle at all, they viewed his ministry as one that was not thriving but suffering. They failed to realize that Paul was being tested and verified through this perceived weakness. What they failed to realize was Jesus came into the world in weakness and he suffered on the cross for us. The weaknesses of Jesus and Paul were orchestrated by the power of God himself. I, I want us to get that because we, we look at, at weakness as, as something we should be ashamed of. And, and something that we should strive to get rid of and put behind us. But here, Paul is, and Jesus, their weaknesses were orchestrated by the power of God himself. And the power of God in Paul and his ministry was evidence of Paul's credibility and questioned their credibility and their church's credibility. Our first topic this morning is examination. Now, it is crucial that the Church of Corinth, First Baptist, and other churches who belong to God see whether they are in the faith. Paul, in this lesson this morning, tells us to test ourselves. This is the second time Paul admonished the Corinthians to examine themselves. He admonished them, he reprimanded them, he rebuked them, he scolded them. He gave them a piece of his mind to let someone, he did this for their sake. He did this so that they would grow up and, and I look at this sometimes, I call that right, righteous indignation. You know, when, when, you, when you get angry for the sake of the people, because you want them to get back in line and, and study the word and walk in the way of God, walk in his righteousness. Paul's primary concern was to bring spiritual help and wholeness to the Christian community. And that's, that's, that's why righteous indignation, that, that's really the definition of righteous indignation. It's to bring spiritual help and wholeness to the Christian community. Now, now this, this examination is not about Corinthians questioning Paul's faith. It's not about you questioning my faith or your faith or anybody else's faith. You are to test yourself. I should test myself. I don't need to test you. I test myself. You test yourself. He goes on to say the, the verse, um, examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? What an awesome question. What a thought-provoking question. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Let's, let's look at that. Examine tests in a good sense for the purpose of finding out for certain your quality, your degree of excellence, what you think, this is what examine means, what you think, 
or how you will behave. Examine also means test your faith in God. The question is, is Jesus Christ my author? Let me see your author. Amen? Examine means to prove. It means to scrutinize. It means to see whether a thing is genuine or not. And fail the test. Here we're looking at the right and wrong behavior or the goodness or the badness of human behavior. In other words, test yourself, not your friend, not anyone in the church, test yourself. You determine if you are genuine or if you are fake. You answer the question for yourself, is Jesus Christ my author? Is he in charge of my life? Not for salvation, but for obedience to the Lord. Verse 6. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. <laughs> You want to share your joke with it? No. No, I'm just thinking that's powerful all by itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's look at what it means to fail the test. <laughs> Failing the self-evaluation reveals a problem of self-imposed spiritual blindness. Self-imposed. This is something you are doing. You want to do. You want to be blind. That's heavy. Mm, yes. I'm afraid I'm scared of that. <laughs> we scurred. <laughs> we scurred with that. Yes, Lord. Self-imposed spiritual blindness, which equates to a life without who? Right, right. Without Christ. Yes. Ooh. Spiritual blindness, a life without Christ. Can you imagine? what your life would be like without Christ? Not at all. No. I don't even want to think about that. I mean, I got... Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. To believe... If it means that you don't believe in God, it means that you, have, you don't believe in Jesus Christ. It means that you don't believe in his word. No, 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 no wonder there's so much going on in this world today. Mercy. When we look at all over the country, when we look at right here in the United States, when we look right here in Virginia, when we look right here in First Baptist Church, amen. amen. It means that they reject Christ. It means that they are lost. It means that they are perishing. It means that they choose not to accept the teachings of Christ and his authority in their lives. They just shut the door to Christ, close the door, and trying to walk in this world today without Christ is suicidal. And some of them commit suicide. Yeah. Under the influence of Satan, yes. They do commit suicide. That's why it's important for us to have Christ in our lives. And we need to stop this fake mess. How are you today? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Don't even know what that means. <laughs> I 
Uh, we need to focus on speak about it. Oh, it's the choices that we make. That is number one. The results of the negativity that we experience in life start with the choice. Do we choose to have faith? And God. And you know that that's very important because once you accept Jesus Christ in your life and the head of your life and truly study and follow his word makes the difference in our life. So our choices will be different, but to me, it's it starts with me. Don't Amen. say me, not you, me. Amen. And the life I live after accepting Jesus Christ as the head of my life, that will show my, I will exhibit my faith in mm -hmm. God because he's the head mm -hmm. of my life. So be careful. Of the choice. Amen. 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 We, we can go on now. <laughs> <laughs> to me, though, the key is self examination. Mm -hmm. And are we genuine in that? Yeah. Because blindness doesn't happen, oh, well, sometimes people are born blind, but generally it's a gradual process. Mm -hmm. And without that self-examination, when your vision starts to get blurry or you can't see all the letters, that's the time to check yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But instead, sometimes we choose to wait. Mm -hmm. So with these little um these little um inconsistencies that don't match up with our faith become foothold, mm -hmm. toeholds and footholds and then strongholds. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we choose mm -hmm. not yes. to be genuine in our self-examination. And you have to understand that when we, with any exam, uh -huh. you have to be truthful. Oh, mm -hmm. or And if you're not, then the scores will reflect that. Yeah, you fail the test. And mm -hmm. I think also in terms of the lens that you begin to see through, when they're blurry, you're not seeing <clears throat> with full vision. So it, it's... It's something. It's something. It's something. It's you're not seeing with full vision. But in most instances, it's your choice. You know, we, we don't want to see the truth because the truth hurts. And when we see the truth in ourselves, that means we got to do something. We got to make some changes in our lives. And so we need one of those mirrors that magnifies, you know, to give you a huge magnification of your face. So we can see all the little pimples and all the wrinkles. And <laughs> you, 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 he says, they choose not to accept the teachings of Christ Mercy. and his authority in their lives. Mercy. Mm. It's they amazing. choose. It's amazing you say that the way you're breaking it down because you use the singular and plural. Mm. And what gets me off, and especially with this. We try to make it plural. It's not, it's singular. Yeah, yeah. So what we've been hearing is me, you being self-examining. But oftentimes, I'll go with you guys, oftentimes people struggle here, they want to make it plural. Yeah. In their in their struggles, we have to be careful leaving in the church, pull, pull you into their stuff, and it's not yours. Mm -hmm. you know? right, sir. We have to watch that. Yeah. I think, I think for me, that's, a, a that's big, right. because people will pull you into things like mm -hmm. that. I don't even know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, you're calling it too. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You have to change where I am. Yeah. And that's when it goes back to the self examination. Mm -hmm. When you to be real with that thing, mm -hmm. and that's when it comes to the full place mm -hmm. when that does happen. Yeah. Amen. It's interesting that you say you have to be careful because you get pulled in. Mm -hmm. You get pulled in because whatever that in is, it looks attractive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
It's inviting. Yeah. And, and that's how Satan gets us. That's, he makes it look real good. Something that you've been, maybe been wanting for I don't know how long. And he'll just bring it to you and you, and you go, oh, yeah, I've been waiting for this. Let me, and without even thinking, gone. Gone. Gone and lost. Because once you cross that bridge, it's hard to get back. I didn't say you couldn't get back. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if, if you, if you recognize it and, and, and you're prayerful, mm -hmm. you know, and you repent and you change your mind and you turn away from it and you resist, mm -hmm. that is your key. Mm -hmm. You must resist. Don't even listen to it. There's one other thing I wanted to share. Um, it's the saying that says, hell is not attractive, but the road to hell is. Mm -hmm. And so look at what the way in which you're going. Because mm -hmm. if that's the road that you're taking, it looks great, it may feel good, it may be all the things you're thinking about, but at the end it's hell. And right. hell is not. Amen. 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 They are blind to the manifestations of God right. as, re as revealed throughout his word and as revealed within Jesus Christ himself when he was here. They are not able to understand them because they lack spiritual discernment. And the Holy Spirit does not give anyone spiritual discernment if you are not saved. Right. If you have not accepted the gift of salvation, you do not have spiritual discernment. You got your own wisdom. Oh, yeah. and, and, you know, we wonder why people that come to church every Sunday, listen to the word, hear the message every Sunday, Go home, can't remember a thing that, that was preached. And we wonder, how does that happen? There's no evidence of spiritual growth. Been going to church 30 years. Lack of spiritual discernment. You can come sit in this church 24-7 and listen to sermons and teachings one right after the other. But if you have not accepted the gift of salvation, it's just going in one ear and coming out the other. And that's a sad state to be in. A sad state to be in. I've got a question. So what about these people, which you say in church, in church, coming in church, what about these people that um, in and out, you know, they don't come regularly, and um, are they saying? I mean, and I'm just saying, pretending like you mentioned, you know, that uh, this is outside people that you know profess that they are saved and and they're in the church once a month, once every two months. Um, or whatever, but what, what about, what, what are they for? For purposes of this lesson today, context, be concerned about yourself, okay? Be concerned about yourself. But in, in verses five and six, Paul hoped that the Corinthians would find that they were not counterfeit Christians nor was he a counterfeit apostle. So as we study this, that's really, that's really what Paul is trying to do. He's trying to, trying to teach the Corinthian church, church. church that he's not a counterfeit. And he does that by saying, don't look at me, look at you. Look at you. Does that answer your question? Okay. 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 I just want to make sure. Yeah. We were talking. Yeah. Can you see that? 
you trying to, you had a question? It's because that thing over there was. That's how. Oh, I guess you another question. Do we have is people it, on? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yay. Okay. Okay. She's, she's, yeah, we have. She wanted to. Oh, okay, but she, but she, oh no, but she didn't. So she, she, she didn't. So she must have changed her mind. Okay. Okay. So um, the question: Will you test yourself, or simply assume you don't have a need for correction? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I think it's a daily test, just like you go through your physical. It's a daily test mm -hmm. because when I look at this, first you got to believe the teaching and the Holy Spirit and authority that's in the doctrine. Mm -hmm. We see in the church, but Paul is looking at the church in Corinth. We start in the church. You wouldn't. Have, I came to church in my life. I didn't expect this, but as in the church, your wife expect me to examine myself. A lot of people in the church are struggling with this. And then if they don't believe the doctrine, the authority of the doctrine, the Holy Spirit to lead them to this. I'm going to have to examine myself even though I wake up tomorrow and think about it. Tomorrow I got to examine myself wow. each and every day. Amen. And uh, that will propel me to move to the next level. Amen. And, and you would be surprised, you know, I talk about myself personally. Mm -hmm. um, there have been some instances where the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I sinned, but at the time, I didn't have a clue, right. you know, and then as I was, you know, as I was in prayer, you know, he just kind of brought that to my, to my remembrance. Yes. And I had to fall on my knees in tears and ask for forgiveness. And see, that's how the enemy gets us. Sometimes he hides our sin mm -hmm. from us. <laughs> and if he can hide it from us, then you can't ask for forgiveness because you don't, you don't know what you did. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important for us as, as, as Christians, when we pray, always ask God, always ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to me. Yes. Well, whatever I've sinned, whether it was yesterday or 40 years ago that I forgot, bring it to my remembrance so I can ask forgiveness. Amen? Amen. In, in, in morning um, devotions, you know, one of my prayer is, as I read your word, reveal to me what things I might not know that I need to um, address as well as um just in prayer because there are sins unknown uh, well you talked about that um but even things that you don't think is a big you know, sometimes you say big sin little sin sin, sin. So, <laughs> but even what you might not think is a real big sin mm -hmm. it's still sin and it sin. still needs to be addressed it needs to be forgiven Amen. I don't care how, how small we think yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. we, we sometimes we say we we take tell little little white lies, little white lies. A lies a lie. A lies a lie. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't okay. care how you dress it up. You know, it, it wasn't a, you know I wasn't I wasn't lying to you. You know uh, you know I was just not telling you all all of what you needed to know. A lie is a lie. Amen. 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 I, I just want to simply say that. Yeah. In my own experience, what I have found is that uh, as I read the Bible and it's even in the Sunday school lessons, and we go through the covenant at church, particularly on the first Sundays and so forth, there's a difference between just reading the words mm -hmm. and then reading the words and have it absorbed mm -hmm. into you. There's a real difference because if you're just reading the words, mm -hmm. it has no meaning to it. Yeah. It's just words. You're just going to the next step. But when you read those words and absorb what God is trying to tell you, Amen. You know I mean? and live that out, that's genuine. You talk about saying genuine. That's genuine. When we observe what God tells us, when we observe what He what He wants us to do, and be real about it. Because, and, because you were saying something earlier, 
that really occurred to me that uh, I think one of it might have been you, Sharon, and that is if you examine yourself and you're not you're not genuine, when you come in contact with another person, <clears throat> that fakeness <clears throat> goes to them too. <clears throat> and that might be somebody who's really looking for Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. And that we've had a, a negative impact on them. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So we have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Amen. And be genuine with each other. Yeah. Because a, a young man came up to me recently and told me something I totally didn't expect. And I'm glad that I was with Jesus. Mm -hmm. at that, at that do, do we know any counterfeit Christians? And what does that look like? <laughs> do we know any counterfeit Christians? <laughs> Well, we, may, we may not know them, but we see quite a few of them uh, in our legislature. Okay. Was prepared to be a Christian conservative. Okay. Right. Um, well, their, their, okay. their words and their policies don't reflect uh, Christ at all. Yeah. So, uh, and on some days, I see one in the mirror. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's, let's be honest. Yeah. Some days when I, you know, I we, and I was like, mm, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're uh, sweet and lovely, then you're not real good. <laughs> 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 you know, I have to write that with Sweet and lovely, not Sweet and lovely, you're not, you're not, you know, you might say, okay. You all want to have a conversation, though. If you all want to share, <laughs> no, no. No, we actually were saying when when that question was raised about, and we were saying that as we recognize the encounter, we got to be we so worried about trying to see what a lot of that exactly. Yeah. Look in the mirror. Yeah. Look in the mirror. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Matthew, Matthew 5 and 8, one of my favorite scriptures talks about blessed and pure at heart. Mm -hmm. The only way to see God is we got to be pure at heart. Amen. Everything we're talking about, we're talking about salvation, we talk about making choices, it all starts there. And yeah. as we repent and get that clean heart, then we start seeing this, this thing start being revealed to us. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're walking the same hand and we the, the bait sugar and all that, mm -hmm. then we're going to be And then, like you said, then we're going to be subject mm -hmm. and thrown in and pulled in. Mm -hmm. But I go back as we walk in that pureness, mm -hmm. and we will be seeing stuff that a lot of times we don't even go out and want to see it. Mm -hmm. You don't show it because you're walking with Him in purity. And it also tells us, too. He's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. That church thing. And yeah, that's, yeah. You know, that's a bit of mind too. Is that we come in, but are we diligently seeking him? Uh, uh, Different. Mm -hmm. Listen to sermons and seeking him. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Amen. That, that, I used to say, do church. Okay, we do church, but we don't, you know, go to receive. We just do church. You know, the church thing is what I need to call it. Right. We mm -hmm. talk about this a lot. Yeah. Oh, well, when do we start doing something about this? Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Okay. Well, good morning. Jason Castle. Yeah. I know we're I know we're to focus on ourselves. Another aspect of focusing on ourselves is also when we're dealing with others. So, for instance, if a student, like for example, a student during the pandemic got all involved with the conspiracy theories that, you know, were so on television and so forth, yet that student before anyway knew the Lord. So, in your relationship with that student, you need to be careful. Of course, and I always ask for God's protection, but you don't just leave that student, right? Mm -hmm. You you want to continue a relationship so that the word of God is truly for them, what they see, not the theories that they have embraced. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Expectations. 
Verse 7. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Now, not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. Now that's a heavy word right there. Yeah. Now, <laughs> would you love to have someone praying for you in that now? Praying that you will not do anything wrong. Do we, is that how we pray? Do we pray for others like that? Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Yes. I hope so. And I, and I hope we call out names. <laughs> And be specific in our prayers. Yes. Amen. Amen. My grandmother called out my name. Yes. Thank God she did. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, so now in preparation of Paul's third visit to the Corinthians, Paul prayed to God that the Corinthians would not do anything wrong. And we just talked about those things that are wrong just a few minutes ago. Amen. Amen. Paul prayed for the state of the church. Paul prayed for God to strengthen them mm -hmm. to do no wrong. Paul prayed that the gospel of truth would prevail. Mm -hmm. Paul prayed that the church would be fully restored yeah. and that God would equip them for life, for life, mm -hmm. not for a few minutes, or for life in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. For life, forever. It doesn't get any better than that. He says, bear the fruit of their transformation and be less concerned with his credentials as an approved apostle. Bear the fruit of their transformation. And the fruit of their transformation, we're going to get into that. Number one is faith. Number two is trust in God. And if they never trusted or had faith in God, they failed the exam. Mm -hmm. So it tells you, maybe that's why we're studying so many lessons on faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Because yeah. faith is important. It's the key. Faith and trust in God is the key. And we should not only be sitting here talking about it. Mm -hmm. We need to go outside those doors because there's so many people inside the church. Yeah, we need, we need to go outside this door right here, mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 to spread the word within the church. But we also need to go outside in the community. Mm -hmm. Help each other. Help each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. That's that's what community is about. Yeah. Well, not even that. It's what God will want you to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. That's and and that's the key. Because God wants us to do it, not because somebody else wants us to do it, but to be um, responsive. If you're meeting homeless people in Williamsburg that needs help, and no one wants to help them. True, that's true. They go, they go other places and help them, mm -hmm. but not in Williamsburg. Not in Williamsburg. That's true. Yeah. Really? Yes, true. So we have some work to do. Amen. Yeah. I mean, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
I will be trying to cut shit short. I know. Oh no, that's okay. We we're here to talk, to discuss, to have discussions. So I have to use everything that's being done. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Also, the fruit of the spirit refers to a list of virtues and character traits outlined in the Bible, specifically in Galatians 5, 22, 23. You can read this, and we're going, we're going to go into this. This is where the Apostle Paul writes about these qualities as attributes that should be evident in the lives of a Christian. So you want to pass the test? Yeah. yeah. The fruit of the Spirit is considered essential qualities for living a Christian life. There are attributes. These attributes are not just virtues to aspire to. They, 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 they are evidence of a life led and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they are signs of faith and trust in God. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, kindness, long-suffering, peace, forgiveness, joy, gentleness, self-control, hallelujah, and patience. Let's look at, let's look at a few of those, just, just, just a few. Love, let's start with love. When many people speak of love, they're speaking of an emotion or a feeling. Uh, emotions. Not, not always emotions, not always feelings. But God's love is a choice. Amen. A conscious decision. Just as he chose to send Jesus to die on the cross for us, we must also choose to suffer. We don't like that. We should choose, choose to suffer for and love those around us. Treat people like you would want them to treat you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We must choose to accept the gift of salvation, number one. We must choose to love our enemies. Mm -hmm. We must choose obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. We must choose to follow Christ. And remember when, 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 when Jesus was calling the, the disciples, he said, follow me. Yeah. They dropped everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Immediately. All except one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Dropped everything. Put everything. Left, left dead, dead working. In the, and put everything down to follow. So we must choose to resist the devil and his temptations. These are choices. These are choices. You can't make them for me, I can't make them for you. Should be the only one thing that matters. God That's it, love. salvation. Yeah. Mine shouldn't matter. <laughs> Amen. Anything else don't. Shouldn't matter. Amen. Yeah. Before we leave love, and love is something you do more than mm -hmm. emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's something okay. you do. Yeah. 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 You know, you have these things like fall in love and then you saw each other twice and they love you. But what have you, you know, how did you show your love other than say, I love you? So it's more than just emotions, mm -hmm. it's, it's what you do. Yeah. And you can really measure love. By what you do, mm -hmm. the way you treat people. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, right. You know, as I said earlier, we're not talking about emotions. Right. Right. We're talking about making a conscious decision. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But there are also different kinds of love, and so we have to, yeah. we have to understand. Yeah. Loving, as far as brotherly love and love to your family, you know, that's all. Mm -hmm. But people tend to only think about that erotic love. Mm -hmm. Amen. Joy. All right. We equate joy with happiness. Happiness may be an outward sign of joy, 
But true joy goes deeper, goes deeper than, than that. True joy is the matter of the heart. Count it all joy. All is the key word. Yes. Good, the bad, the ugly. And if we trust in God's master plan for our lives, that trust will overcome any circumstance. We gotta get this. Mm -hmm. Circumstance. And then there's patience. Peace. Have I missed peace? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I admit that I don't have patience. Okay. <laughs> I got you are not alone. <laughs> I think that's the number one weakness for most people. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But, but I don't want to forget peace because peace. regardless of the state of the world, we can feel peace because the fruit of the peace comes from who? Jesus. Jesus. From yes. Yes. Not from the world. Nope. Inward peace is reflected outwardly and allows us to be ambassadors of Jesus' peace. True peace comes from knowing God is in control. Amen. Amen. When we know he's in control, we don't have to worry about anything. And then there's patience. Here we come with patience. And you know, we don't need to spend about we, we know about a person who trusts in God. Patience. That's where our patience come, comes from God. The fruit of patience is displayed when a person has the Holy Spirit living in his or her heart. Yeah. Kindness, compassionate to one another, forgiving, oh my goodness, forgiving each other. Yeah. Yeah, forgiving each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not yeah, yeah. We we have a hard time forgiving. Yeah. You know, we, we say we forgive, but you know, but we still holding it. We, <laughs> you're not alone. You know, we, we say we forgive, but we can keep that whatever that is for years. Mm. And and then all all it has something has to do with it happened to remind you of it. Right back in. Just like it just happened right. yesterday, you know, just a minute ago. This is a blessing y'all let me in here. Amen. Oh, Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Anytime. You're welcome. We'd love to have you. Kindness. Oh, yes. Forgiving each other. Christ forgave us. Yes. If he forgave us all the <laughs> ugly stuff that we do and say and how we treat each other and how, and how we even treat him. We wouldn't even have anything if it wasn't for God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Kindness builds relationships and draws others to you. So you, in turn, can draw them to the Savior. That's what we just talked about. And then there, there are others, I didn't go into all of them, but there's goodness, uh, which is the fruit that encompasses moral goodness mm -hmm. and integrity and reflects the commitment to God by sharing his love with others. And then there's faithfulness. I really should have put that one up there. Faithfulness as a fruit of the Spirit. We apply that trust and believe in God through our faithfulness. If we are faithful to him, then we will share his love with others and we will act in accordance with his principles. 
we will follow him. We put everything down. Follow him. Read God's word. And that's our weakness. You know, if we want to know how to follow him, get the prison. I mean, <laughs> the word of God. Amen. Anything we need to know about what we're going to, what we should do, and how we should do it is it's in his word. Bible. Yes. Yes. It's in his word. Word. Reading God's word is important to faithfulness to him. If we don't know his precepts, we can't be faithful. Mm -hmm. And then there's gentleness. And gentleness actually indicates great strength. Mm -hmm. We look at it as weakness. But it actually indicates great strength. And the bottom line here for these verses, you're in Christ, which means that he had, excuse me, which means that he has not failed you, mm -hmm. but that he and others succeeded in bringing you into the body of Christ. Somebody brought you into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You heard something somewhere from somebody that made you make a conscious decision to give your life to Christ. Amen. And then this, this is our hope. Not mainly because we want to succeed. Not mainly because we want to win brownie points for ourselves. But mainly because we want you all to be living well in Christ. Amen. We want that even if we look like failures. It's not about us. Amen. But we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. <laughs> When we use the proper criteria to self to the self-assessment test, coupled with prayer, the truth of the gospel will prevail. No faith, no trust, no fruit in God, the truth of, gospel, of the gospel will prevail. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Verse 9, we are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong. And our prayer is that you may be fully restored. Paul, Paul placed himself in a position of weakness, just like Jesus did, for the sake of others. Right. He was willing to suffer hardships, persecutions, if it meant <laughs> strengthening the faith of the church. Are, are we willing to suffer for our brothers and sisters so that they, we can, they'll build up in, in, in Christ and in the word? Are we willing to suffer? Yes, we just yes. yes. He, he Paul yes. prayed for strengthening. He prayed for perfecting the soul. In other words, Paul prayed for training, discipling, instructing, of the people mm -hmm. so they would be equipped for life in the gospel. Right. Uh, uh, did you get that? For yeah. Life? Mm -hmm. right. For life in the gospel. And then verse 10, this is why I write these things when I am absent, that when I come, mm -hmm. I may not have to be harsh in my youth of authority, the authority the Lord gave me for building you up and for and not for tearing you down. Right. Leaders in the church must give an account to God for those they serve. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Give an account to God <laughs> for those you serve. Mm -hmm. And that goes for everybody. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes this responsibility requires that we speak sharply, severely, like Paul. Paul had to reprove them. He rebuked them. He admonished them. He exhibited righteous anger, yeah, right. indignation, yeah. which is grief over sin that arises when we witness an offense against God or his word for the purpose of bringing them back to the path of righteousness. Amen. Last but not least, finally, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters, mm -hmm. rejoice. Strive for the full restoration. Encourage one another. Mm -hmm. Be of one mind. Live in peace. Yes. And if we do that, <laughs> the God of love and peace will be with you and you and you and you. Yeah. Paul emphatically urges, encourages, warns the people of God to be of one mind mm -hmm. by suppressing all selfishness. Unfair preference. You know, we have we have a, a, a habit of, of, of having our favorite people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Favorites. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. He warns the people to be in one mind. He says, all selfishness, suppress all selfishness, unfair preference, and favor. Favor. <laughs> Favor. <laughs> really? Amen. Instead, Paul exhorts us to cultivate unity of interest. Yes. Live in peace mm -hmm. so that our outward life bears witness to the fact that we have one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It does not get any better than that. So this concludes our lesson this morning. But I'd like to know if, if we have a few more minutes, what is your takeaway? Give, give me. Oh, wait, wait. You sure? Just yeah. give me two people your takeaway. Two people give me your takeaway from the mess. That we have to examine ourselves and mm -hmm. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. when it, with that self examination mm -hmm. comes true, and that it in turn our faith and I believe in God mm -hmm. is what shows that we generate the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Yeah. And choice. And choice. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend Grace. Hallelujah. Uh, our Sunday school report this morning, we had uh, 27 in attendance. We had an uh, offering of $52. And our next week lesson will be uh, defending our faith. Right. Defending our faith. Right. And the scripture, the background scripture, uh, will be a first Peter. The third chapter, verses 8 through 17. Amen. First Peter, third chapter, verses 8 through 17. And we also have a visitor here today, Brother Jason Campbell. Let's give him a round. And now we will hear further from our superintendent. Amen. Very quickly, my voice is about gone. Okay, give me a couple seconds. Okay, thank you, Dr. Grace. Great lesson. One of those lessons where you really got to do a a lot of talking behind. Um, one of those, again, we talked about self examination mm -hmm. and salvation, love, fruits of the spirit, ultimately, God being in control. Mm -hmm. We're understanding that mm -hmm. and walking in that thing and disciplining day by day. Amen. So with that being said, the pastor's taking our guest pastor around, bringing him in. Otherwise, he'd be talking about it. So with that being said, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation. Yeah. We thank you for the ability to be able to examine ourselves, to make sure that we're in line with your will, 
We pray, Lord, that what has been taught to us, that we take it, that we receive it, and that we apply it. Yeah. We thank you again for the assembly of the Holy Spirit right. and the unity of the Spirit of this body of Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to come together in spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. And we pray, God, that you just manifest yourself as you've allowed us to have our pastor in this family for the last 20 years. We thank you for just allowing us to come together in spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the Sunday school ministry. Uh -huh. We thank you for those who have the desire to teach and also those who have the desire to be students. And we just thank you, Lord, as you just, just take control, just touch us all, guide us, and lead us accordingly. Until we meet again, Lord, these and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.